Welcome to another episode of Pro Style Podcast. And today is actually interesting because my freshman year, at the end of my freshman year, I had the opportunity to host this individual, man. And he came to Vanderbilt campus and the coaches were raving about like, man, we got to get this guy. And I was like, man, who is this guy? He was a local kid. You know, this guy goes on when Super Bowl goes to the Pro Bowl and just, I mean, he's just crushing it right now, man. So please welcome my man Golden Tate to the show. Golden, how you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. It's funny you mentioned that. Uh, I, I was just thinking about it. Um, I remember those days when I was a senior in high school or junior in high school, whatever I was, and I was uh, coming out to old Vanderbilt. You yeah. Take me out, take me around all the frat parties. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's funny because because <laughs> looking back at it, man, it's like. Dang, man, what if, like, what if Golden would have came and played opposite side of me, you know? like Yeah, who like, knows what would have happened. I that would have been, that would have been crazy, man. Yeah. That would have been crazy. The city of Nashville would have been on fire, man. But ultimately, you chose the fight in Irish, Notre Dame, man. Talk about what impacted your decision to go to Notre Dame. Yeah, I went to a Catholic high school and, you know, so Notre Dame, I heard about them through my peers and how they all worship Notre Dame. And I was like, okay, I, I'll look into it. And so I took a trip there and um, just kind of fell in love with the campus, um, what they represented. Um, took I actually only took one trip and that was to Notre Dame or official visit to Notre Dame and I committed. But at the end of the day, it came down to they were going to let me play football and baseball. Um, I knew if I graduated um, similar to, to Vanderbilt, I was going to be set up for life. I, I'd have opportunities outside of, you know, baseball and football. Um, and lastly, Coach Weiss had won Super Bowls, which is that's the ultimate goal is to get to the league. Um, at the time, I didn't know if it was baseball or football I wanted to, you know, play, but I knew that Coach Weiss had, had seen many Super Bowls. Uh, he knew how to get guys to the league, and so I kind of took a chance, and, um, and overall, I say, I say it probably worked out. Man, you know what's funny about this is that you and I had the same two schools as our final for what university we would pick. Notre Dame and Vanderbilt were my two. Charlie Weiss called me and was like, Earl, what are you doing? You're making the biggest mistake of your life, son. Why are you not coming to Notre Dame? I just like, coach, you know what, man? I feel more comfortable at Vanderbilt. He goes, no, you don't understand what you're doing right now. <laughs> your future is at stake. And he was just like, man, you you need to come to Notre Dame. And I was like, nah, man, I'm I'm, I'm going to Vanderbilt. And he was just like, all right, whatever. And just kind of like hung up the phone. But that's cool, man, because we both had like similar paths. And you ended up, you know, being drafted by the Seahawks. And just talk about playing uh, at, at that stadium, man. Because a lot of people don't understand, like, playing like in that stadium is totally different than anywhere else. Yeah. Um, really just playing in that, that city um, and really just playing in Pacific Northwest. Um, you know, there's not really any teams i mean the closest team's got to be what san francisco maybe yeah and so you got like all the you know people from canada are usually rooting for seahawks uh part of oregon is um like idaho and montana all those we get all the support yeah. from all those um states um but you know going back to your question i mean that stadium was electric um every time i i'd step foot in there regardless if i was the home team or away team it's electric their fans, um, 12th man is real. Um, they definitely play a huge difference in the game um, when I was there. And, um, you know, being nine nine years in, you know, just finished my ninth season, I still think that's the most fun stadium to be a part of and play in. Nine years in, my man, playing at Seahawks. So what, what stadium was the craziest for you to play in? Was it at Notre Dame or in Seattle? I would definitely say it was – it was Seattle. Gotcha. Um, they were just over the top. And, and Notre Dame, the student section, I mean, we weren't as good as we should have been. So the student section kind of clocked out by the third quarter. <laughs> and they, were, they, were too, they had one too many natural lights. Yeah. Yeah. Once yeah. They probably want to get pizza. But, uh, you know, on Sunday, a Sunday night game, it's, it's special in Seattle. Yeah. Um, you know, you pull up to the stadium and people are wearing all the green, the gray, the blue. Uh, the Seahawks logos are everywhere. You're right there by um, Safeco Field, um, and and you know you look up at, at and hear the crowd, yeah, and all the sounds and the music and nighttime. It's it's just special. <laughs> it kind of it, it brings tingles to, to my body. 
That's dope. And, and what's cool is, man, your production. Like, you produce at every single team you go to. Like, it really doesn't matter. Like, you go to Detroit, you produce. You go to the Eagles, you produce. I got one question for you. Who throws the better ball? Is it Carson Wentz or Nick Foles? Who throws a better ball? Uh, man, they're they're both so different. Um, man, I, they're really different. I would say Carson has a very very strong arm, and yeah, I guess I didn't get a fair assessment of Carson because he was coming off an ACL. Mm-hmm. And he's also dealing with those back injuries, so I didn't really get a chance to like really like the feel for him, and, and really neither neither with with uh, Nick, but. Oh man, I mean, it's, that's such a <laughs> tough question. I would say I would say my production was a little bit better. I thought with with Nick, gotcha. Um, but that's really not. I mean, they're just they're completely different. They're just different players, so it's kind of hard to even pick one. I mean, I really enjoy playing with both of them, right? Um, but I only I only got like three or four games with both of them, really. Gotcha. So it's kind of yeah, yeah. kind of hard to pinpoint. You know who's better, I guess. So you you want a deep ball, all right? Russell Wilson or Matt Stafford? Who you want throwing into you? Deep ball. I know who I want throwing into me because when I when I see those two quarterbacks, I'm like, yo, both of these guys have rockets, right? They both have really strong arms. But when mm-hmm. I look at the deep ball, Russell Wilson deep ball is just it's so pretty. Like it literally just lands right in your lap. Like he throws it so high though. He throws it yeah. extremely high and it just lands right in your lap. Like catching 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 deep balls from from muscles like it's like catching toilet paper. <laughs> make your hands so soft. <laughs> it was, you know, super, super easy to catch. I yeah. mean, I mean the guy on the run, you know, he throws a deep ball. The the best in the league, I believe. Yeah. Um you know, they always seem to be on the money or you always could adjust to make a play. And and that's not saying take anything from Stafford because Stafford throws a hell of a deep ball oh, as well. For Stafford sure. could throw it deep 80 yards yep. with ease. Um, you know, Stafford ball just gets there so fast. His arm is so strong. <laughs> and then like when it leaves his arm, when it leaves his hand, you're like, oh, I got time to get under it. And then all of a sudden it's right there. Yeah. Uh, it just gets it so quickly. So, um, but I, I really didn't, I didn't get too many deep balls with Stafford um, just because I was mainly in the slot the last right. few years. And, you know, obviously Calvin was getting all the deep balls. And then once Marvin came, he was getting a lot of them. And Kenny Galladay came out and um, a, a tall, taller, fast guy was right. getting a lot, of, a lot of deep pass. So I kind of majored in the, in the slot, but I'll say this, as far as ball placement, mm-hmm. Stafford, Stafford's taking that one. There were times where, you know, I thought I was completely covered. But then staff would throw it to me. He would throw me up and like he might throw, you know, low and outside, or he might throw it, you know, high and outside. Yeah. With a guy on your back, but it would be on the money, so yeah. you had a chance to <laughs> play. And so that's something I definitely appreciated, and something I learned, you know, once I got Detroit. So, um, I've I've been blessed to play with a bunch of um, good quarterbacks uh, yeah. in my career, and it's something that is very important, especially for a young young receiver, because you're you're. It's kind of all in the hands of of the quarterback. Yeah. Um, early early on in your career, um, and if I didn't have a good quarterback early on, I don't know if I would have made it this far. I mean, hmm. maybe maybe I would have got cut or something. You you know you've seen you've seen guys like Eric Decker, right? Um, Eric Decker had Peyton and and and, and balled out. And then once he left <laughs> left Denver, his production kind of went away. You know, pretty quickly. So having a good quarterback definitely plays a big part of it. Yeah. So now, man, you're a vet in the game. You're one of the top receivers. See, a lot of people like to box you in. I, I'm not that guy to box you in, right? Like, when I look at you, yeah. you are an athlete. Like, you can play on the outside. You can play on the inside. You even return punts. That's what a lot of people don't really understand. Like, you can really do it all, which, you know, I admire because as a wide receiver, you have to be able to block, run routes, catch the ball. And, you know, do the dirty work, man. And, and you do the dirty work, and that's what I like. But now that you're a veteran in the game, you're a free agent now. Free agency is coming up. Are you looking for a quarterback that's more established or a younger quarterback to play with? Uh, I'm just, you know, 
my time is limited. I don't know if it's going to be three, four, five, six yeah. years. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm on the tail end of my, my career for, for sure. Um, and I want to get another ring, man. Winning the Super Bowl was probably, you know, one of the highlights of my career or the highlight of my career. And I want to get back there so much uh, more um, that that's, that's what the goal is. So I want to go yeah. into a good situation. Um, I kind of want to have my cake and eat it at the same time. I want to go somewhere where they slang the ball a lot. They have a good quarterback. They have a good offensive line. They have a good, good offensive coordinator. Uh, I kind of want it all. But yeah. uh, I, I don't know what's what's going to happen in the future. I, as we know, uh, free agency starts at March, at mid-March. So yep. that's when the bidding yeah. uh, starts. Um, you know, I just – I'm gonna go into a good situation, man. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta kind of do a lot of thinking and praying on it and talking to my family. But ultimately, I want to go into, and I keep saying it, just a good situation. Yeah. Well, when I think about a good situation, there's this one team, right? I have a legend quarterback, legend head coach. A lot of people don't want to say, it, but he ha- he's actually a legend offensive coordinator up there. With the Patriots, man, what what's your thought? How do you think you would fit in with the Patriots? Because me personally, just looking at some of the deficiencies that they have, you know, outside of, you know, of course, Elderman, they don't really have a guy that could do a lot of things. And I look at you and like, hey, we can slide him in anywhere in this offense and he would be productive. How would you feel playing with Tom Brady? Man, I would I would I would love it. <laughs> um, I would love it. Um, in that organization, they've proven to be champions. Yeah year in and year out yep. um you know they they work hard for sure but you know where you're going to be at the end of the season you're going to be in the, looking at yeah. you know not going to the playoffs but you're going to be looking at maybe a first round bye for sure which is key but um you know you, you got to admire that organization they do things right and they've been doing it for a long 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 time um and so i, I definitely love to be a part of something like that and definitely catch a few passes from Oh, Tommy boy. Oh, Tom. Um, Julian is a buddy of mine, so I'm, I'm real good buddies with him. And um, I've heard good things of Calvin Noy, who got traded from yeah. uh, Detroit and and went there and has been balling out since. As right. I said, great things about the organization. So I definitely would not mind going over there for yeah. sure. What about a, 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 a reconnection with the Seahawks? You think that that's possible? You know, anything's possible, man. I I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it definitely, definitely could happen. Yeah. Um, I still keep in touch with, not during this period right now, but uh, kept in touch with Pete and, right. and Schneider for sure. Um, you know, they another another organization that has it figured out. You know, they're they're in the playoffs year in and year out. Yeah. They know how to win. Um, you know, there's been times where people say they don't have much talent, but they still find a way to win. So they know know what they're doing. Um. You know, I got some of my buddies over there still with Tyler and right. Doug Baldwin. Yeah. But uh, who, who knows, man? Yeah. It's, that's the cool. A that's the cool part about free agency, right? You you just don't know what's gonna happen. There could be a team that pop up late. I mean, it could you know make some moves to fit you in. We don't know what's gonna happen, but man, I look forward to seeing wherever you go. But let's let's shift gears a little bit, all right? Let, let's shift right. gears, man. Let's do it. Hip hop before every game. All you hear is just music blasting, right? What is the guy in the locker next to you? What is sometimes the equipment guys, they have music just blasting, you know? So you just never know. What's that one song that Golden has to you has you have to listen to before you play? You know what? I kinda I kinda like I'm on year nine now, so I let all the young guys they have a lot of music <laughs> and I just kinda bang the whatever. Like usually it's stuff I I pretty much know all the songs for the most part, but if we're just talking about my fa- my favorite artist, not necessarily before a game, but just in general, like I'm I'm a Drake fan. I love, oh, nice. I love Drake's music. But uh I mean there's a there's a lot of just new cats just popping up. That's <laughs> right. Like that is very true. Like, like I like Lil Baby's got a good album. Yeah, very um, good. Who's the kid who's the dude that sings when? When when J Rock. Yeah, J Rock. Yeah. I like or yeah, I like him. Uh but there's a, there's just a lot of hits that I just like. Yeah. So I just kind of bang out to whatever, but yeah, that, you know, that there's a there's a there's a lot of dope songs. So what's the what's the symmetry that you see between hip hop and sports? So for me, I look at the competition, right? Like everybody wants to be the best. Whether it's like beef, you know, in the hip hop game, or it's a rivalry game in sports. What's the symmetry that you see? Oh, uh, 
Um, I, I would say hip hop, they got it. They got it much more harder than we do. I would say because in hip hop, they got other people have to like them. Yeah, other yeah. people have to like their music. Like they could be spitting fire in their mind, but unless other people like them, it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, therefore, in football, if you can ball, people gonna see you can ball regardless. You can't keep good players down for for long, no right. matter who you draft in front of them. Good players are gonna always find their own the field. So that's that's where I think it's tough. But um, as far as competition, I, I definitely say there's always there's constant competition um, in the hip hop world. There's always a guy who's you know, going to come out with this this hit that's going to have yeah. people heads turned. Right. There's always going to be in a football realm of things that someone this this undrafted rookie that's just hungry, that's waiting for his opportunity. That you know, injuries happen in injuries happen in, in NFL that just waiting on waiting on his turn to to play. Yeah. Um, and then, so I, I would say that's the competition is definitely stiff in, in both hip hop and and sports. Really. Yeah. See, that's why I had to have you on the show, man. Because I know you appreciate music. You you listen to guys like Drake, J Rock, Lil Baby. You listen to everybody, right? Like like oh, you yeah. don't limit yourself to like one guy because I know some guys is like, yo, I just listen to, you know, Jeezy and that's it. Like I don't rock with nobody else. But for you to listen to multiple guys, but then also give the analogy how they have it much harder than we have because they have to try to get people to listen to them, whereas like the fan base is already in Chicago, right? So when I got right. to the team, they they were gonna watch Earl Bennett regardless. When Golden right. Tate got to the Seahawks, they were gonna watch him regardless. So that was mm-hmm. pretty cool, man. Hey, and this is what we do, man. You know, this is this is why I have guys on the show like you to talk about the symmetry between hip hop and show, to between yeah. hip hop and sports. Have you, you know, talk about what's going on in your life in terms of football, but to also to really like humanize the athlete because hey man, just like some of these other guys listen to music, we like listening to music too, man. So I appreciate you. Yeah, for sure, man. It's always it's always fun catching up with you, Brody. Yeah, man, it was good catching up with you too. I gotta I gotta get out to Cali, man. I gotta come out there, holler at you, see what's up, man. But hey, how can the people follow you on social media? Yeah, you can uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Showtime Tate. Um, and yeah, I appreciate the appreciate the love that, that the fans always show me. Uh, could, couldn't do it without y'all and I'm, I'm excited about the future hopefully uh, I end up at your team yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see soon but uh, yeah you gotta get out here to San Diego man this, this, this is my view this is what I'm dealing with right here oh man that's King, beautiful Mabel. yeah in the canyon so oh that's beautiful man yeah now yeah. I'm gonna come out there check you out man my man go to take coming to a team near you Mr. Do It All brother I appreciate you for being on Pro Style Podcast for sure, man. Good luck with everything. Yes, sir.